I'm just sitting down after the most beautiful late spring, early summer day. It has been so sunny and warm and gorgeous and I am so happy and I felt like filming a video. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my business and money. If we haven't met before, hello, my name is Rebecca. Um, I run Lucky Sprout Studio, which is an art studio business. I have been doing this, I started my business back in 2018, but I've only, but I was doing it really casually on and off for a few years. And it was only last year in 2022 that I decided to go all in because I had the time and availability to do that. And it's been really fun. Um, so I thought I would do a little video where I tell you about how much it cost to start because I kind of wondered how much did it actually cost and it's a little bit weird for me because some of the things I'm going to talk about were expenses that I covered a long time ago and others are things that I have just acquired like technology and stuff but I broke it all down to some categories so I'm going to tell you what it cost me to start my art business. So a couple of notes on my business first and I've got all my notes right here so I don't forget anything to tell you. So in terms of me and my skill set, um, I've been self-employed since 2018 and it's really fun. I love my life and my career that I've built. Um, my skill set is I can do illustration, I do graphic design, I've worked as a book designer, I've also worked as a website designer. So I've dabbled in a ton of different creative careers and I have a pretty wide skill set and I think that has helped me a lot. But a lot of what I've done, well, let me rephrase that. Everything I know has been self-taught because I went to school for classics and I was doing my PhD in classics and actually dropped out of that um, to be self-employed for other personal reasons. But anyways, I don't have uh, like formal training in art or business. Everything I know has been based on the fact that my formal training was in research. So I kind of knew how to find out information and that's been the most important skill in my opinion. I wanted to start the art business because it was just always a dream of mine to work as an artist. I was a really artsy kid. And when I was in grad school, doing paintings and things like that were how I relaxed after class, I guess. I would basically work really hard all day, be exhausted and just go home and just fling paint at a canvas. And it was very therapeutic. So it always had a deep place in my heart for art. I also used to always threaten I was gonna drop out of school and just go to art school as if that was like an easy alternative. It absolutely wouldn't have been, but it was just always in the back of my head as one day I'm just going to quit it all and go and do art and kind of in a way I ended up doing that. But anyways, I'm not going to talk too much about like the creative process in this video. This is going to be more technical just about like what it cost and the things that I think are essential that you need to buy or invest in to get started. And I'm also sitting down here with my plants in one of my happy places with, uh, I'm on my yoga mat with my plants. So we're just having a little chill conversation about the realities of business. Okay, does that sound good? Okay, sounds good to me too. So my business, important thing to know, is primarily a market business. I attend a weekly market and I also go to like special event pop-ups and things. I have a booth, I have a table, um, I have a whole kit and display. It lives in my car almost full time uh, in the trunk and I can set up in like 20 minutes. So I'm very efficient at what I do. I do have an online store and I started that right around the same time I started doing markets, but it is not my busy thing. My busy thing is the markets in person. And I think that's partially just because it's a little bit easier for me and my personality type to focus on in-person markets, whereas I have a hard time sitting down and, and dedicating time to marketing the online store. But it exists, it makes sales, so that's nice too. But um, yeah, primarily a market business. And when I started, like I said, I had assets, like I had technology and some stuff I will name, but I didn't have any art. Like it really, uh, I didn't have any pieces I wanted to sell. I didn't have a back catalog of paintings that I was working off of, so I had to start that which I did do in last year and continue to do regularly now. Oh, and last note before we get started, I'm Canadian. What I'm talking about is based in Canada. However, a lot of this is universal. The only thing that is not is like registration and all the prices I'm gonna be talking about are Canadian dollars. So that's gonna be higher than US dollars um, by an indeterminate amount. I can't do the calculation in my head, but uh, I will give you the final amounts at the end of this video. I'll tell you what they are in US. I did convert that. So we can, so just know I'm talking about Canadian dollars. Okay, so category one is setup expenses and equipment. The first thing that is on my list is uh, business registration. 
And here in Canada, I registered as a sole proprietor. What that means is that I, the business is not separate from me, but I can operate under a trade name and it still exists on paper. So it's not a very expensive thing to do. It's not like, um, what's the name of it? Why am I blanking on what it's called? It's not like the kind of thing you do when you need a lawyer to set up your business, which is, I'm completely blanking on the word. I'm gonna remember it and put it on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. This is obviously gonna vary a lot depending on where you are. Um, you don't necessarily have to technically register a business to attend like markets, like they're not gonna check that you're a business usually, uh, or in any case that I've ever done, but in order to declare it on your income tax or file GST or HST or whatever other tax you need to submit for your business, or to operate under a trade name, you need to be registered. So that is what I, I did. And I did that years ago, but the cost of doing that for me was about $120. Um, and half of that was the name search. It's like the thing you do to like reserve a name. And the other half of that is um, the actual fee you pay. And then every year to renew is like $70. So the upfront cost for that was about 120. Next, my website. So this, there's a ton of options. Obviously you could do like a Squarespace, a Wix, whatever. Um, because I have like my web design background, I like to do things the complicated DIY way. So I have a WordPress site that I have a WooCommerce store on and it's hosted on a server that I rent. The cost for that is probably more than if you were just, well, actually, is that true? No. So the cost for that is I pay for the server, which I have a ton of websites on. So it's not just my one. I pay about $400 a year for that. That is not, in the first year you get a really big discount. So I think I paid like $100 for my first year, but this is for a server with enough space for multiple websites. And I even host some client websites on there from back in the day. So I think you can definitely get a website hosting thing for like definitely less than $100, maybe like even really cheap if it's just one website you're trying to build. I host that on SiteGround. Then I have my domain name, which I pay for, which is luckyspritstudio.com. That's like $20 a year. And then WordPress is free to install. Um, WooCommerce, which I use for the online store is free to install. And I use a page builder, but I don't necessarily recommend that. I just use the storefront theme. And uh, yeah, so it's not actually very expensive. That option is very time consuming, but overall I would probably budget like $150 for a website of this style. But if you wanna go with a service that's a little easier and more user-friendly, the Squarespaces, the Wixes of the world, then that might be a different price. But I'm gonna go with 120 as my sort of starting website cost. I also have a business bank account and it is just a very basic savings account because that's just where I put my tax money. Um, I probably, I'm not gonna get into like my personal financing situation, but I don't pay anything for my bank account. I just got like a really basic simple one just to help me keep some of the important money organized. So not a necessity right away, but it is good if you are collecting taxes at any point. And the payment processor that I use in markets is Square. So that's the app called Square and they charge a transaction fee. It's not very much. I, I don't have any problems with the fees, but I bought the tap reader so people can tap their cards or their phone or whatever at markets. Sorry if there's a really loud crow you can hear. I have my patio door open and I have a family of crows that lives outside and they're just singing the song of their people. Anyways, what was the thing? Square Reader. Um, so I bought the extra one, it's $60 for that, but it is totally worth it because it can do debit and credit and whatever else people have that they can tap. So that's kind of the setup category. In terms of equipment, this is stuff that I already had. So I will kind of give you a final total that includes the technology, but also doesn't. And by technology, I mean my computer, my iPad, Apple Pencil and printer. Those are all things that I had, well, I bought a new printer, I'll mention that in a second, but I had this stuff from previously, they were business expenses for other things I was doing, so they weren't new. And if you're considering doing this kind of business, you might already have these kind of assets or not, that's up to you, so I'll include price with or without, but I didn't have to buy them new for my business. But in terms of prices for that, I have a Mac desktop computer. I think it was like $1,800. I have my iPad, which was about 900. These are not new also. These are like probably four or five years old, but they still work great for me. Um, so 900 for the iPad and then the Apple Pencil is like 120. And then my printer, so I have two. One is like an $80 printer that I got a millennium ago that takes regular cartridges. And that is great. I think the cartridges are like 20 bucks. So it's just like a cheap printer I can use for paperwork or signs or anything like that. And then I bought a new printer last year that is an Epson EcoTank 2400. 
I really like it. The only thing it can't do is print on heavy paper, which is honestly quite a bummer considering the kind of products I sell. But I do really like it and it does a nice job, especially for the notepads and things that I make. So um, yeah, and that printer was 330. So obviously if you add in the technology, this is a very expensive category. But like I said, a lot of people who are interested in creating art and selling it might already have some of these pieces or you don't have to also have the exact technology that I have. Of course, you can get just like a more affordable laptop um, or a, a different tablet. Although the iPad is kind of standard um, for drawing just in, in my experience. So for this category, which is startup and essentials, the total of things that are not technology is $300. And then if you add in the technology, the computer, iPad, printer, Apple Pencil, then the total is $3,130. So obviously the most expensive category if you add in the tech, if you don't own that already. So category number two is booth setup. So like I said, this is specific to me running a market booth business and uh, my booth is pretty simple. I don't have like a huge display primarily because I don't have a huge car. So everything that I have has to fit or fold up. So I think I've come up with really good solutions and also I've gotten really good at packing a small car absolutely full to the brim. But the things that I think are essential, so I'm not including a table and chairs in this because almost all of the events I go to, they are included. Um, or a chair isn't, but you can just get a folding chair if you need to bring your own. Okay, so expenses. Tablecloth, definitely a must have. I just got mine at the thrift store for $7. You can just get a big white one. I have a yellow and white checkerboard one and it's very cute. So just a secondhand tablecloth. Fixtures and displays for my booth. So I have DIY'd some foam core displays that my prints go on. I have another video explaining how to do that. And I made two and they cost me, I think $20 all in for the materials. So very affordable. Everything else on my booth, um, I got some picture frame easels, like little stands from the dollar store. Those were probably $10 for a few of them. I use those for books or prints or whatever I have. And then everything else on my table is just stuff I found around my house, like little containers, um, little acrylic boxes or stuff to put prints in, um, little trays, just stuff I had at home. Um, so nothing really fancy. And I'm not including this here. I do have a bigger display piece now that I bought off Facebook Marketplace. It was a fixture from a store going out of sale, but it has like slots for, I don't know what it was for, but I use it for greeting cards and it's heavy and huge but I do manage to fit it in my car. But this is very like, I'm not gonna recommend you go find the specific thing off Facebook Marketplace. I also paid way too much money for it. So um, fixtures are gonna be really up to you, but I think you can make a nice display with just stuff you borrow from home and a little bit of craftiness. So all in all fixtures, I just put that at like $30, um, but you can spend more on that if you like. I It's not something that I would invest in on day one personally, just for my opinion, because um, I don't think you're going to get it right the first time. So better to do one or two shows with like your DIY setup and then really understand what is advantageous. Look at other people's booths. Um, then you'll be able to spend your money a little more wisely. I have a vinyl banner for my booth. So this is like, how big is it? Like four feet by two feet, I think. Um, bigger could be probably better, but um, it just has my logo on the front. I got it made at Staples, but I think you can also get them lots of other places in the US. I think Walgreens is popular. I got it for about $30 because I had a coupon. Um, it was just one of the promotions they had for vinyl banners. Um, and I really like it. I got an outdoor material for it and I did get grommets attached. The grommets haven't actually been all that useful because I end up just taping it to my table with like clear packing tape. Um, and it looks fine. I don't think anyone is looking at my sign and making judgments of my booth because I have a very colorful display. I should insert a picture somewhere here of my booth so you can see it. Um, but yeah, I'm, this is what it looks like. Well, actually, let me show you a picture of what it looked like when I started and then what it looks like when um, now, when it's a little bit more cohesive. It has been an evolution, but all of the signs on my table, like with prices or anything describing anything, I just make on a home printer. And sometimes I will use um, little picture frames to put them in, but I'll just pull them off my wall, honestly. And I have like picture frames from Ikea that I'll put signs in. So I don't have a cost associated with that. It's mostly just stuff I make. I did get business cards and people take them a lot and I don't think that there's a ton of value in it. I don't think I've gotten a lot of outreach from my business cards, but I could be wrong, but I don't spend a lot of money on them. I have designed so many business cards, both for myself and for other people in the past in my graphic design work. And I am very, what's the phrase I'm looking for here? 
I'm a big advocate for extremely simple, cheap business cards because the people who have like the thick ones with like extra coating and they're like UV laminate, like it's a business card. It's probably going to go in the garbage. So I just get a like $20 box of 500 from Staples and they are single sided and they are color printing and they have the important stuff on it and it's simple and clean. I leave them on my table and people just take them all the time. So who knows? But um, yeah, it is good to have because people do ask for them. If I, The days I forget to put them out, someone always asks for one. And the last thing that I think is really essential for your booth setup is to have a float, a cash float. So money that if people pay with cash, you can give them change. The amount of float that you want is going to depend on the size of the event you're doing. But in general, I think that most people pay by card uh, at the shows that I go to. So I have like a $200 float that is mostly um, $5 denominations or less. I do keep usually a few bigger bills because sometimes you get a show where someone shows up in the first 10 minutes and they have a hundred dollar bill and they're buying a five dollar greeting card and personally I feel okay saying no to those people and being like listen I don't have change for that um and I never feel bad saying no to a giant bill because I'm a small business and they should know better um but some people aren't as confident at saying no to money as <laughs> I am apparently so uh, it can be good to have some bigger bills as well in your float. Um, and some people like to have a cash box. I don't do a cash box because I wander and I'm always afraid I'm going to lose it. So I wear like a waist belt um, and put it in there or I wear it like across my chest diagonally. And I don't think it looks very cute, but I'm not there to look cute. <laughs> That's a lie because I am. So that is my booth category setup. So the total amount for that is $87 plus my recommended $200 float. So the $200 float is not money you're spending. It's just money you have on hand to make change with, but I'm going to count it in this just to know how much money you need to possess in order to make this business work. 287 for the booth setup. Like I said, you can definitely spend more on your booth, but I, I do it pretty scrappy to get started and build off of that. Okay. Expense category number three is products. And this is going to vary a lot. So the products that I sell now are art prints, greeting cards, journals, notebooks, stationery, uh, book books. That's pretty much it. Anything made of paper. But when I started out, I had art prints and greeting cards and then a really tragic miscellaneous category. I was doing Christmas markets. So I made all these like wooden painted ornaments. I didn't sell any of them. I just sold the cards and the prints and I had like some other random things that I just, you know, wasn't my best move because I, but the thing is, I can't beat myself up for that because I didn't know. I had never done markets with this business, taking it seriously. The last time I had done a Lucky Sprout Studio market was probably like pre-pandemic. So it was not super recently and that's okay. So I don't feel bad about that, except I did waste a bit of money on inventory. And I definitely ordered way too many prints of each design without realizing that not every picture is going to be a good seller. So I still have a lot of prints that I look at regrettably in a big pile on my bookshelf now. But my advice is to figure out what your budget is for products and what you need for your show. So I would say that for starting off the Christmas shows I was doing, I budgeted about $500 for prints and I'm excluding all the random things that I sold. Those, no one can account for those. If I was starting again, I would budget $500 for art prints and greeting cards. And that's not including the packaging for them because um, I get them printed for about, I mean, it's really gonna vary, but because uh, you can get sales on printing when you get them done in big quantities to you get discounts. So there's no easy way to quantify it, but roughly a dollar a piece is kind of where I'm looking at for these things. Um, yeah, but that doesn't include like the time designing them or packaging them or, I mean, just the illustrating time alone adds a lot to the cost of items. So just in terms of printing costs for that kind of inventory, I budgeted 500, but don't be like me and order dozens and dozens of prints that you are not sure will sell yet. Now, um, this is a, just a slight tangent from what we're talking about. I do my weekly market. If I have a new design, I bring three copies of it because if, if one sells, amazing, that tells me that people like this print. If two sells, that tells me I need to go get more for next week. And if all three sells, it's like, I don't know, I'll just be, like, be really excited um, because I have a really big collection. So if one new print sells on the first day I bring it, that's a really good sign. So, but I'll bring, like I said, three copies of a new design each week um, as sort of my benchmark instead of printing a dozen. And that is much more efficient for my business finances now. 
In terms of packaging, um, because these are in-person markets, I do put all my products in plastic sleeves. You can get eco sleeves. They are very hard to get in Canada. Um, I know there's more websites in the US for that, um, but in terms of like availability um, and getting them to me in a quantity that I can afford, um, it's hard. So mostly I just order like the cheap plastic sleeves that are recyclable at least. And uh, I get the card ones that are probably about $20 for a pack of hundred. Uh, I'm, I'm just guessing now, but I can link the exact ones I order um, in the description. And then the costs for the art print ones are a little more because they're bigger. So it's like $30 for a pack. So it's not crazy expensive for those, but that is just something to factor into the price of your items. So about $50 all in for packaging for my products. Some people like to go all in and get like custom stickers made with their branding and everything. I think that's super cute and I don't bother with it. Um, Maybe this is just, maybe it would make people more happy, uh, but I don't have any problems running my business and not putting cute stickers and everything. It's just an expense that I would be too forgetful to reorder in time. So it would constantly just be a problem, I think. But you could definitely do it uh, if it's important to you. So, and, and that's totally the rule of running a business like this anyways. In terms of bags and things for customers to take products away in, the majority of my customers at every show I've ever sold at will have their own bags. And I think that's partially because where I live, plastic bags are banned. Like we don't sell them in stores. You can only get paper bags for a cost, which I think is great. So most people come with their own bags. Um, but for some people who don't, or they buy a lot of things, I have two options, which are not glamorous at all, but honestly they work and I'm not complaining. Number one is I have brown paper lunch bags and I can put a ton of art or I can put a ton of greeting cards in those or notepads or whatever. So those are great. And if people want a bag, I just give them a lunch bag. They are very cheap at the dollar store to get a big pack. And then if people buy art prints, I just have like folders, like those manila folders you get in packs of like 10. Um, I just bought those and they average out to be very cheap individually. So I just consider it part of the cost of the manufacturing of the art print basically. And not everyone wants them. And some people buy multiples and put them all in one or like I'll often have people buy them in their group and everyone will just put them in one to take back wherever they're staying. I wasn't really able to find any paper bags that were the size of the art prints. And I also don't think I would want that because I think people would just crumple it and the prints would get bent. So um, yeah. Another thing that I didn't even have on my list is that some people will get a uh, chipboard and put it behind their art prints to make them more sturdy. That's not something I do for my market prints, but if I was going to be wholesaling and I wasn't able to like attend the prints and check for bent ones and stuff, I would order a big pack of chipboard in the size of my print. You can get them off Uline and other places too, I'm sure, and uh, put those in the back of the prints just to keep them sturdy. So I don't have that included in here. I don't do that for markets, but I would if I was wholesaling. I also got a custom stamp made from Staples. It was like $30 and it has, um, it's, I think the template is like an address stamp. So on one end it has the picture, which is my little logo symbol. And then it has uh, my Lucky Sprout Studio, copyright Rebecca Wilson 2023. That's me, I'm Rebecca. And then my Instagram handle and then my website. So I just use the template that they do for like return address on a, on a letter and uh, it's great. So I use that stamp to put my information on the back of all my art prints. So it will never be able to be forgotten who made it. Um, and I put it somewhere where there's ink on the other side of the print so it doesn't show through. I print on really thick paper so it's not like there's no bleed through issue but I just put it higher up for that reason. And I put them on the back of notepads. Um, I don't use them for my greeting cards because the greeting cards have my info printed on the back of the card. But I found that the stamp has been super valuable and just in terms of making my product manufacturing easy. So $30 for the stamp and also $7 for the ink pad. Beyond all of this, there are tons of other little office supplies that I use that I'm not going to factor into here because they will really vary things you might already have. I use an X-Acto knife and a cutting mat and glue and tape, um, markers, pens and pencils, stickers, like um, for price labels. These are just like miscellaneous office supplies that you may already have. So I'm not going to factor that in, but what you need will vary. So that's pretty much it for the category of products. And that means that my total for this category was $597. So 97 was for the packaging, the stamp, the bags, all the miscellaneous things. And the 500 is my budget for product creation or printing rather. So huge variables in that, but 
that's what worked for me for my first couple markets. So that's what I recommend. And the last category is one that is really variable. So it's not going to fit into our total tally, but things that you should kind of be aware of. So number one is transportation and vehicle expenses. I have a car, so it's easy for me to get to and from events, but obviously transporting a market booth's worth of stuff is um, difficult and you may need to borrow a car if you don't have one. Um, I'm not sure how feasible it would be to use public transportation to transport all that stuff, but maybe if you had a really patient cab driver or something, I don't know. But there is like fuel expense to get to and from events. Um, I don't really do events that are further than an hour away because I don't want to, usually they're early, I don't want to get up that early to drive. But um, yeah, so there's the transportation expenses. There's also fees for shows. Um, they vary a lot and so therefore I cannot predict what kind of shows you are doing to add them in. But I've done shows that are anywhere from like $10 to like $15, really cheap ones, to shows where I paid $500. Um, I think the most expensive show we've ever done is probably like a thousand. Those are not what I recommend for beginner artists, um, unless it's like something you know is gonna be really good, like an illustration festival or something really catered to what you do and it's well known. But generally, like when I got started, I was just doing cheaper shows and I did one kind of splurge show and I it wasn't worth it, honestly, uh, partially because I hadn't really honed my business enough to really be able to make a cohesive booth yet. Like that was the, the photos from my first booth was, but also because there was a lot of duplicates of my kind of art, like other people selling art prints, which was a little bit repetitive, and also um, just wasn't as well attended as people expected. And for those reasons, it can be a good idea to start a little bit smaller. Um, you don't have to go for a big expensive show right off the bat. Farmers markets are really great if you have one near you. Um, little art shows. I've done, I've mentioned in other videos how I find shows, so I won't go into that here. But like I said, expenses for that can vary. You also want to count for food and snacks while you are working. Um, it is very hard to resist buying things when you're at a show, especially when it's quiet and you start to wander, which is absolutely my uh, habit. Um, but that's okay, like it's not bad to buy from other vendors, but uh, sometimes you spend all your profits. So I am very strict about packing lunches and bringing my own food and drink because um, I, I don't wanna spend all my money at the shows I'm working at. And another thing that you could add that is not specifically show related is accounting services. Um, you do wanna keep track of your money somehow. You can use like a free app like Wave or Mint, I believe. Um, I think QuickBooks you pay for. I use Wave, but I also do a lot of stuff just on spreadsheets. Um, like I said, I won't get into my financial <laughs> management. Uh, I have my own system and it works really well, but it is hard to explain. Anyways, uh, or you could hire someone to help you with your taxes at tax time uh, if you're confused. So that might be something you wanna budget for as well. Okay, I think that's everything I could possibly think of that is essential to getting started running an art business, specifically with a focus on doing in-person markets, but also with an online store. And so in terms of costs, if we talk about the cost without the new technology, without the computer and the iPad and stuff, then the investment is looking at about $1,184 based on my estimate, again, Canadian dollars, which is about 870 US. So um, there's a few variable things in there. And like I said, it doesn't include um, the technology, but also like fuel and food and event costs to get in. But that's like my base cost of what to expect that I can predict. If you were going to add in all the technology and everything and just get everything you need, then that amount is $4,000, um, including all the tech. So, I mean, as far as business investments go, that doesn't seem crazy to me, but it is like, if I was just starting this from nothing and didn't have like money to invest in this business, that would seem like a lot. So it's all about perspective, of course. And that is, uh, how much US? Like 29.50 US. So still a substantial amount, but like I said, that's buying like computers and iPads and stuff. So I hope this is good. I'm gonna put my hands down now. <laughs> Stop holding up imaginary numbers. Okay, well, I hope those numbers were helpful and that was a little bit of insight into what I kind of had to put into my business to get it up and running. And since then, I've had to invest in different things, but generally the investments I've made since those initial ones were for more inventory, uh, different kinds of products when I've diversified my product line, um, additional displays for my table as I've improved the display over time. Again, I don't spend a lot of money on it. Um, I find a lot of DIY or... Facebook Marketplace options for my table. 
And that's about it. I guess another category that I didn't really cover because it's not very essential is like if you're going to do a lot of social media and do YouTube, you may want to get like a camera and a microphone. These are things that I already had for other work things, so they weren't investments, but I don't consider this to be like an essential part of starting a business uh, yet. Um, I'm still kind of getting started with YouTube, so I don't have a lot to recommend there yet, but maybe I will in the future. And also get a Canva account. You don't need to get a pro account, um, but it's not the most expensive thing in the world and I think it's worth it. So anyways, that is it for my thoughts about numbers. Numbers are not easy for me. Uh, I have number dyslexia and I always really struggled with them, but it was only when num numbers became tangible in my business that it started to make sense to me. But I still don't know left from right. Uh, that's part of number dyslexia. So this beautiful spring summer day is ending and the sun is starting to go down. So I better wind this down. Um, if you have any questions about anything I talked about or other expenses um, that may come up and you're wondering about, just let me know in the comments or if there's other topics about running this kind of business or anything I've done that you want to know, I love to share. Let me know. I'm happy to make more videos for you depending on what you want to hear about. Um, you can check out my Instagram to see some of my art. I do post cute stories, so that's fun. Um, please do subscribe if you like my content. I'm making more information videos, studio vlogs, tutorials. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gesturing to here, but uh, lots on offer. And anything else I have to link that I can't think of, it's going to be in the video description. So you can check that out if you want to know more about me stuff. Um, but thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, I'm very happy that I was able to help. Hopefully I did. And if you're just thinking about starting your market business or your art business and you are just getting ready to make those steps, I'm very proud of you already. You're going to do fine. Don't stress too much about it. Start scrappy. It's okay to make mistakes. I definitely did when I started. Try and hit the essentials and then, you know, learn for the next time. It's going to be fine. So that's my best advice. It's going to be fine. I'm gonna wrap up the video. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye.